Okay. Uh, today, uh, Juan, uh, we'll start the lecture. Uh, we are going to talk about how to characterize fluctuating stresses. And what do we mean by that is stresses which involve mean uh, value. So as you all know from the wave mechanics in physics, if you want to find the mean stress, then all what you need to do is to add, or let's say as in the slide right now, you know what? slide this is a, a mean force the force which is applied that the mean of the force is equals to the maximum force plus the minimum force divided by two as you know if the minimum is negative these values will be subtracted if the minimum is positive these values will add up and then you will have to divide it by two uh, while the amplitude which is always positive um, is the maximum minus the minimum. In reality, Ashabab, we don't need to put the uh, absolute value over here because the, 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 uh, unless, unless we are trying to say like a compression, compression cycle. Yeah, that's, uh, that's necessary. If it is a compression, compression, okay, the amplitude will be, um, uh, will be negative and this is why are we trying to give you the indication that amplitude is positive why because even for a negative negative we will always yeshabab look at the mean add to it and then subtract from it in order to construct the cycle so that's why the amplitude has to be positive if it is negative Okay, then when you have the mean, when you add or when you subtract, okay, then what will happen? You will kind of flip them over, but it's better to make it absolute. And this is where you get a positive value. So when you add to the negative mean, it become less negative. And if you, if you subtract from negative mean, it become more negative. That's it. Now, uh, in terms of stresses, we are going to deal with stresses. We're not going to deal with forces, mostly. Um, the mean stress is going to be equal to sigma max plus sigma minimum divided by 2, and the amplitude is sigma maximum minus sigma minimum over 2 or, or, uh, under the absolute value. There is a, a famous ratio in fatigue, which is called the stress ratio, and it is R ratio it is the r ratio and it is very famous for example when i tell you r ratio of minus one this is the most famous r ratio of all why because if you look when this is equals to minus one it is equals to minus one if if sigma minimum is negative uh, sorry let me not write minimum if sigma minimum is minus sigma and sigma maximum is positive sigma, which means both of them have the same value as the same magnitude, but different signs. And this way you will get this one cancel out with this one. You will get here one and one, so it, you will get minus one. So the endurance limit that we studied in the last part was obtained for R ratio of minus one. Because, yeah, Sheikh Bab, in general, um, whenever we want to characterize a material, what do we do? We run the test with R ratio of minus one. This is the first choice. Why? Why do you think so? So we can get uh, the mean is zero. Okay, why do we want to get the mean is zero? I mean, we will say in a minute that in reality, mean is maybe never zero. Most of the time, there is always mean. Uh, you cannot guarantee that the maximum is the same as minimum. You have variable loading and so on. So mean equals to zero is a special case. So if it is a special case, why not we do test as a standard, first thing we do 
is to do them with uh, with mean stress. Uh, because we want we when we want to uh, test a specimen, we want to idealize all things and make it like perfect uh, factors, so it will not affect the test. Okay, in general, yeah, Shabab, this is a relatively not bad answer. In general, what are we going to do? We will just like tensile test. We run the tensile test at room temperature. That's the standard way. If you want to know the tensile test at other temperature, either you go run it, or if you have a, an equation that tells you, you no, know, no, you don't need to run the tensile test at 200 degrees Celsius. There is a, an equation which you can use, which will tell you if you know the tensile behavior at room temperature, you can know what is the tensile behavior at other temperature. Same thing here. So. We have also an amplitude ratio. It is less common, but you will see it later. It is sigma A over sigma M. Now, this is an example of what an, uh, a fluctuating load is. As you see, this one is an example. It's, it, it is mimicking a real life example, okay? The, the wave is not nice and uniform. This is with positive mean stress. We can see that the, this mean stress is somewhere here and it is positive. The mean stress, ya shabab, daiman yaqa' fi al middle, ma bain al maximum wal minimum. Fa, if, you, if you look, this is the maximum, this is the minimum, this is the mean. This is the maximum, this is the minimum, this is the mean. And as you see, the mean itself could be far from the zero line. And that's why the mean itself is not zero. So what are we going to do then? Uh, in general, what people do is the following. If you are a manufacturer of a machine and you discover that your machine, one part of it is subjected to fatigue with an R ratio, R ratio, which is, for example, Point one. Point one. It is positive and it is not one, it's point one. Let's for example, or R equals to point five, or R equals to minus point two. So it is not minus one. You have two choices here. Imma you tamil testing the material at R equals to minus one, and then you find an equation that tells you what happened to you when you have R ratio different than one. Or if you are the manufacturer of this machine and you've been selling this machine for too long and you think you will sell it for a hundred years, you're probably now a millionaire. Go and, take and, and give it to someone, an, a research center, a university, and tell them, listen, for this material, I want, me, I want you to develop to, for me the stress life curve with R ratio equals to 1, R ratio equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and then minus 0 0.1, and then minus 0 0.4. I mean, this is going to cost you a lot, maybe a million real. Why? Each curve needs 30 specimens, and each curve needs several months to run hundreds and thousands of hours of testing. But then you will make no prediction because theories are theories, equations are equations. They might be right, they might be wrong sometimes. Okay, now this is the most important curve uh, that should for life teach you what does it mean to have a mean stress. So this curve is a little bit, and it deserves to. But uh, I can't spend half an hour on this. So I want you to truly focus with me over here, okay? Now, what are we going to do? You, the question is this. If you have a material and you want to know what will happen to the material depending on the amplitude of stress that you apply or depending on the mean stress that you apply or depending on both the amplitude and the mean. Like, for example... We can say that you want to run uh, R equals to minus 1. So what happens? Sometimes you apply small amplitude. Sometimes you apply big, bigger, and bigger. This is going to generate 
the same stress life curve that we talked about before because you have no mean. But the question is this. What if I tell you, okay, I want to know what is the effect of mean stress? So I can do this. Listen to me. I can have tests done like this. Let's say, let's say I do the same mean stress positive, huh? This sigma mean is equal to 10, 10, 10, and 10 megapascal. And then what do I do? Above the mean, I apply amplitude of 5. And then I apply amplitude of 10, like this. And then I apply amplitude of 15. Look, the negative now start to go negative or the minimum. And then maybe 20. That's how many tests I need to run to explore 10 amplitude with many different, no, 10 mean with many, many different amplitude. A lot of tests. And then somebody will ask me, will tell you, Baib, how about if I want to do the same thing with the 20? So you need to go and say, okay, I am going to make this one 20 and repeat all tests. And then 30, and then 40, and then 50, and then 60, and then 70. And remember, each time you change the amplitude, each time you change the mean, you have to do a lot of amplitude and you have to repeat the test for each one at least three times, at least minimum three times. Maybe you need to do them five times. I mean, you need an army of machines to do this. Do you understand? That's an endless story. It will take years to develop this. But when you do it, you can say that I have a table and anyone who tells me what is the mean, what is the amplitude, I will tell him what is the corresponding life. Amplitudes includes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 200, 300. Means include. Positive 10, positive 20, positive 30, positive 40, positive 50, negative 10, negative 20, negative, all combinations. And then you will start having a 2D map of what's going to happen to the material. If you have positive with negative, you have negative with positive, all possible combinations. This is what this figure shows you. So I think you appreciate now how big of a deal this figure is and, and now look look what do we have in this figure an amplitude ratio s a um sorry s a over s e what does this mean يعني يا شباب احنا نعرف ان الاس اي هي الاندورنس ليميت صح so if i apply s a equals to s e so, ratio is SE divided by SE, which is equals to 1. Ma'anaha ana, hapait amplitude equals to what? Equals to the endurance limit. Bas al kumsal, bidun, without mean, without mean stress. If I apply sigma A, which is equals to SE, what is the life? What is the life? One cycle. حرام عليك يا فارس كسرت ظهرنا انفنت that's the an endurance limit if the amplitude is equal to the endurance limit انت كانك تجي حق العميل وتقول له والله انا حسبت اللود عندك الامبلتيود هنا الاندورنس ليمت انت المفروض تصفق مبسوط because this will give you infinite life theoretically now on the other side yeah, shabab. So let's think. What if sigma A, okay? Yeah, shabab. What if sigma SA uh, over SE? 
لما هذا الرقم يصير ليس دان 1 وات داز ات مين؟ وات داز ات مين؟ ات مينز يو هاف ا لايف جو اهيد انفنت انفنت لايف واي انت 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 فارس لاحظ اذا انا قسمت رقم على رقم اخر والنتيجه طلعت اقل من واحد ايش معناها؟ معناها الرقم اللي في الاسفل اكبر من الرقم اللي في الاعلى صح؟ صحيح ذن ات مينز ذات سيجما اي از ليس ذان اس اي ذا امبلتيود اللي انا حطيته اقل من الانديورنس ليميت صح ولا لا؟ فاذا انا عندي السيجما A was stress life is like this, and this is SE. أنا الآن قاعد أتكلم عن amplitude here. What would you expect the life to be? Mm-hmm. Infinite, no doubt about it. Now, what if SA divided by SE is greater than one? معناها أنت عندك finite life. صح ولا لا? Your load is your amplitude is higher than the endurance limit amplitude. معناها you will have finite life. صح؟ Okay. Now, this. This is the meaning of the y-axis. It's putting a line around one. What is one? Anna, let me uh, erase this. What is one, ya shabab? One is an amplitude which is equal to the endurance limit, which is supposed to give you five infinite life. Any circle in this figure means failure. يعني معناها صار عندك failure. صح؟ فلو تلاحظون, you don't think that this is a beautiful because around one, sorry, I'm trying to highlight this, around one, It seems like you have a boundary, صح؟ اتركوا هذه هذولا هذولا يا شباب outliers. I know they shouldn't happen, but sometimes life is you know not perfect. But if you look, this line seems to be like a boundary, huh? All points are around it or above it. Above it معناها إنه the amplitude is higher than the endurance limit so that's where you get failure but below it just on the line you don't get failure or you get failure on the line only not below it except for these little ones good now what is the x-axis show for x-axis what is it the x-axis is separating the curve into two parts the first part this is zero what is this This separate the mean stress into here positive, here negative. يعني إحنا الآن بالنسبة للmean stress وهو راح نعبر عنه ب SM divided by SUT. Why SUT? ليش ليش المين stress قارناه بالالتيميت سترينج تدرون ليه يا شباب؟ لانه when you have a machine when you have a machine and you tell the machine I want you to run a test with a mean stress and amplitude do you know what the machine will do? if you look at the load versus time in the first few seconds the machine will go up until it reach the mean stress After the machine reach the mean stress, it will start cycling. So, إحنا بش بنقول بنقول what is the worst scenario? إنه هذا المين stress يكون the ultimate. إذا المين stress كان the ultimate, خلاص راحت وطي ال the machine. That's the worst scenario. And we are scaling the 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 x axis with the ultimate strength. يعني the highest possible stress that we can apply. يعني يمكن لو توصل المين ستريس إلى الالتيميت بس تجي هنا 
ما يمديك يا شباب تعمل سايكلينج يعني بس تصعد فوق انكسرت العينه. You understand? So let's go back. Now look how interesting is this. If you go in compression, which means that the mean stress is compressive, okay? And you look that SM, the mean stress, divided by the compression ultimate. طبعا احنا خلونا نتكلم عن material. The compression ultimate is the same as the tension ultimate. I don't care about whether they are the same or different. Now look, هنا يا شباب انت ايش سويت؟ جيت وقلت انا بجي وبعمل سايكلينج uh, الامبلتيود عندي مساوي للانديورنس ليميت وراح اجي واعمل مين ستريس اي ويل شيفت ذا سايكل داون وذا مين ستريس ويتش از نيجاتيف الراتيو حقت النيجاتيف فاليو هذه Definitely start by zero. What does zero mean? It means that SM is zero. معناها ما عندك ما عندك negative mean. Okay? Or it can go negative point two or negative point four. طبعا إيش معنى negative point one? يعني معناها يا شباب إنه you went the machine just like I showed you the example. The machine went negative. Until the ultimate compression, SUC, and then you started cycle. طبعا في ال في ال compression يا شباب, you are compressing the material. You are not pulling it up, so you might be able to cycle. Okay. Now, so what happened over here is that no matter how much you do compression, يعني ال compression نفسه. You increase it more and more. Here, more, more mean. The mean stress is more, but it is negative. Yet, okay, and you apply an amplitude which is equivalent to the mean. Uh, I mean, to the endurance limit. And what do you get? You get failures around this line. You see that? Which tells you, no, the mean is not changing anything. The mean of point two or the mean of minus point one, you are almost getting the same behavior. You are only dependent on the value of y. Do you see that? It doesn't matter. It didn't change anything. But look, look, yes, Shabab. What if we apply? Sorry, I need to. Okay. Now, the question now, what if we apply an amplitude which is way, way less than the endurance limit? Yani, S have a, have a problem over here. Okay. So the question is this: What if we applied an amplitude S E S A divided by S E, which is less than one? What does this mean? It means that the amplitude is too little. It means that if you look at the strain stress life curve, you might apply a stress right here. Very little. Yeah, any. You are probably sure that even the theoretical infinite life is gonna happen to you, but you apply very little positive mean, very little positive mean. You see, this is very low value, and you apply a, a mean stress. Let's say not little, not big. Just you apply mean stress. What did you get? You get failure, and then if you increase this and you decrease the mean stress, what happened? You still get failure. So you say, what if I increase the load? I become closer to the mean, to the uh, endurance limit. But in exchange of that, 
I am going to reduce the mean. So look at the mean now. The mean is 0.2 only, only 0.2. And because you apply the stress positive um, a, a mean, even though it is too little, it is still to causing you failure. كل الداتا هذه is there causing failure while you are doing a test with sigma a less than se yet you still get failure because of the mean stress if it is positive yes uh, احمد الان يا دكتور اذا كنت في المساحه اللي تحت الخط هذا هذه no. سيف صح Yes, no failure. Yes. No failure. If I can't barra al yamin or fog, this is failure. Yes, yes. No. Yeah, yeah, Doctor. The. Now, ya akhwan. If we touch the line, there is a failure or what? Yes, the line is in the bond. It means failure. Okay. okay. Now the question is this. إحنا الآن بإمكاننا نستنتج قانون عام. You know, general, let's say equation. We can say that if you are, if you apply negative mean, then, then the fatigue life will be influenced by what? Only the y-axis. So SE over SA is what is going to govern if you have failure or not. So if SE over SA is less than one, then you are safe. Isn't it the opposite, Doctor? SA over SE. Oh, sorry, Ashabab. I'm sorry. SA. Thank you. SA over C. So, if it is less than one, then you are safe. If sigma mean is less than what? Zero. هذا خلصنا منه. سهل المعادلة. I need to compare SA with SE فقط. But هذا إذا كان ال mean is negative. But if sigma mean is positive, then look what will happen. أنا الآن في المنطقة الأخرى هذه. This is something you need to appreciate, otherwise you will not understand what is coming next. Now, هنا أنا الآن في المنطقة هذه. And if I am in this region, okay, the question is this: What is the failure line? هذه نقطة البوزيتيف مين لاحظوا زيرو وبعدها المين بيكم تنشن بوزيتيف سو somebody might tell me this is the failure line ويجي واحد ثاني شوية نون كونزرفاتيف يقول لك لا والله انا بقول ان الفيريال لاين كذا صح ولا لا؟ از ذات ترو؟ ما تحسوا يعني انتم يو دونت فيل ذات ذا داتا is somehow encompassed over here. And واضح واضح إن الداتا فيها parabolic nonlinear behavior. It's very clear. The question: Do you think that this line is gonna separate the safe, not safe region, or this one? Somebody, someone, someone else might come. Yeah, يقول لك وش شو هاد؟ Yeah. Yeah, somebody might come and tell you, what is this? Is this set is this second order equation? Or is it um an uh, above equation? So this question was asked by too many very long ago, and this is the answer. The answer was this. That little part on the side of the curve made one, I mean, let's see, one, two, three, four, four equations. Four people, four equations. What are these equations? The first one was Sederberg. 
His name is Söderberg. And you need to remember the name very well. Söderberg said, well, my equation, my, his proposal, طبعاً دائماً الآن في الإكس أكسس what do we have? We have sigma mean. Well, X axis, we have sigma amplitude. The question, what is the point of sigma A, which is dangerous? And what is the point on sigma M, sigma mean, which is dangerous? And what is in between them? Is it a straight line? Is it a parabolic line? فاختلفوا الجماعة تخانقوا يعني انت لما تشوف فتقول والله هذول كل واحد يسوي كابي بيست من الثاني But maybe, I don't know honestly. So what happened? Soderberg said that, okay, our critical point in the y-axis is ST. يعني, انت, you are, you, you will not have a problem if you are below SE, you will have a problem because you are above the SE. So you will see that all of them agrees that SE is our point. On the y-axis, which marks the dangerous zone. طيب, what is the y? Soderberg said, the, the, I mean, what is the x? Which is the mean? قال, شوف, the mean stress, لما تطلع فوق, before you start cycling, you should not go beyond the yield. This y. بعدين, ش قال? قال, ما بين ال SE وما بين ال SY, It's a straight line. How the isma the Soderberg line. How is it written in mathematically? It is SA over SE plus SM over SY equals to one. Period. And then there comes the Goodman. The Goodman, the modified Goodman, is an Goodman was another scientist or engineer who said. No, I agree that SE is the first point on the y-axis, but Goodman said in the x-axis, we should go all the way to the ultimate. So the ultimate, we know it is higher than SY. So this is SUT. And he said the line is straight, but it should start from SE all the way to the ultimate. Then Gerber came, the third guy. طبعاً هذه معادلة Goodman. As you see, the the difference is S Y and S U T. بعدين جاء Gerber. و Gerber قال no. It is between S U T and S E, but the relation is not linear, and it has a square, which makes it like a second order. So the relation will become like this. SUT and SE, but it's now not straight line. And then finally, the American Society of Mechanical Engineer has developed with his researcher uh, an elliptical relation, which as you see, it's between again SE and SY, not SUT, and it is elliptical. Ellipse is just like an ellipse. So it is a relation between SE and SY, but it is an ellipse. Do you understand? Of course, there is a, a line which is famously known as the Langer line. Langer line is the line which indicate that both where the amplitude and the mean, when you add them together, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get the maximum stress because the amplitude plus the mean is gonna give you the maximum stress. Now, he said that that line should be also considered. Why? Because while you are cycling, you should always remember that the amplitude and the mean, if you add them up and they become equal to the yield, then you have a problem. So that line is called the Langer line. SA plus SM equals to SY. Okay. Now let me show you interestingly how these curves add up. Now if you look here, this is the mid-range stress, which is the mean stress. This is the alternating stress, which is the amplitude. And here, look what do we have. 
we have SE, the corner point of all criteria. And then we have SY. The connection between SY and SY, the dot line, is the Langer line. فأنت من المفترض based on our understanding is that although you are applying cyclic loading but yielding should not be there while you are cycling. So Langer line will separate the yielding region and then and then what do we have? We have the Soderberg, the first one and then we have Goodman between SUT and then we have Gerber between SE and SUT. And then the elliptical equation is this. Uh, let me do it with this color. This is the elliptical equation. As you see, it's going all the way to S1. What do you do? If you look, this curve, all of it depends on what? Depends on material properties. It depends on SY, SE, SY, SUT. All what you need to do is to tell me what is the amplitude and what is the load that you are applying. And then what did I what would I do? Look what I'm gonna do. If you tell me SA is 100 and SM is 50, for example, I will get two lines intersecting one point. And when I draw a line from the middle through this point, I will intersect each line of those equations. And then I can say which one is telling me I failed, which one is telling me I am safe. So for example, this point clearly is on the line of what? Of Gerb uh, of Goodman. <laughs> It is touching the line of Goodman. Look at it. And it is above the line of Soderberg. So Soderberg will like you are dead. Goodman will like, oh, you are in Burj Khalifa right now, standing with one foot. But the elliptical equation, as well as Gerber, will like, no, 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 <laughs> you, you understand, yeah, Shaba? Do you understand? So, of course, the fight will continue. So, this is a diagram for Goodman, which uh, gives you an envelope of all possible loads with life, but we're not going to use this one. We are going to use the master curve. So, in one second, I will tell you what is the master curve or the master diagram, and then I will have to stop taking your attendance. We'll continue this in the next lecture. The master diagram, ya shabab, look at it. In the y-axis, in the x-axis, it has the minimum stress. This is another inclined axis, which is the mid-range stress. And this is an out, this is the uh, amplitude of the stress. This is the maximum stress. And look, the value on the top are the amplitude ratio A, and we have the R ratio below it. Everything is in here. So let me show you one good example. If you look at this point over here, point A, okay? Now, when we draw a coordinate system, to identify the, the point on the coordinate, we draw a perpendicular line from the point to the axis. So I am going now to show you how we do this. Now look. If I draw a perpendicular line to this one, I will intersect this point. It will give me the mean stress. Okay? And if I draw the, inter the perpendicular point to this, it will give me the alternating stress. صح? The amplitude and the mean. And if I draw a perpendicular line to down, it will give me the, me the minimum. This one will give me the maximum. And if I go from the point of zero all the way through A, I will intersect the R ratio and, and, and A ratio. And while I'm doing that, look what happened. I have constant life curves. Look, this curve, whenever you hit it, you are at 10 million cycles. You are at 1 million cycles. 
If you hit the curve here, you are at 100,000, and this one is at 10,000. I will tell you, tell you, inshallah, Shabab, later, how do we make use of this curve? It's a very interesting one. Can you please um, uh, turn on your webcam quickly so we can take the attendance? Okay, Akhwan, quickly. We have only one minute. Faisal? Yes. Shahel? Okay. Yusuf? Yusuf? Where are you, Yusuf? Yusuf, are you here? Uh, Hamad? Yes. Ali Gahtani Ali Hal camera and the tour or then No no Ali El Gatani El Gatani Ali Yes what did you say? After Hal Camera the Tour Yusuf or then Yes of course you should and you should say yes This is not the first time we do it yeah. Ali You're not here Yusuf El Yusuf موجود دكتور بس كاميرا اللابتوب مو راضي تشتغل ما ادري ليش. طيب آه ماجد اي كان سي يو حسن العلي موجود دكتور اوكي محمد موجود دكتور عياش حسن موجود يا دكتور مبارك مبارك اوكي احمد موجود هنا دكتور الحاجي علي معجب موجود دكتور سلطان الحربي يس دكتور عبد الله حجاب يس موجود سلطان هوشان موجود سلطان موجود يا yeah, اوكي okay. عبد الرحمن موجود دكتور خالد العتيبي موجود دكتور عبد الله العوفي موجود فارس موجود يا دكتور موجود ثابت حاضر دكتور علي رمضان موجود دكتور هاشم موجود دكتور ماجد موجود محمد موجود دكتور احمد سلطان موجود دكتور مشعل موجود دكتور وليد موجود دكتور محمد يس دكتور موجود عبد الله موجود دكتور اند احمد موجود لا دكتور علي القحطاني معلش وين ار يو علي كنت معك والله لكن معطي ميوت من نفس اللابتوب اتكلم اتكلم ما توني شلت ميوت اوكي يا شباب 